Hey everyone, Warix here. So, 30 minutes ago, as you can see, Blizzard dropped a massive, unexpected Dragonflight development notes. And obviously there's a lot going on in this, but massive class changes and new talents for Druids 100% caught my eye. So what we're gonna do for now, I'm trying to download PTR to see if this is up so that we can get into the game, it's into, onto PTR itself to see if this is on. Let me see if it's up and running while I do this, but uh, to start, let's just talk about this. All right, so Trader's Post, if you haven't seen the news on that, my opinion is I think it's a good thing. Seems like it's gonna be decently implemented. I'm sure the people that care more about that will implement it. I'll mess around with it, but definitely not going to be. Uh, all right, so all the PCR realms are offline, unfortunately. That's sad. All right, so for now, this is what I've got to work with. So. We're going to go over these line by line because it's for the entire druid class and we'll talk about these kind of quickly and rapidly because i don't want this video to be too long and then as we get access to ptr and i'm able to play with some things i'll definitely be doing follow-up videos particularly for guardian and feral but we'll also look at balance as well restoration didn't really get any changes in this tree so that tells me they're pretty happy with it but they're impacted by the class class trees changes so We'll take a look at the impact that has on resto so let's start so swipe is now a baseline druid spell at level 10. cool uh swipe and brutal slash damage was reduced by 50 percent obviously this impacts both feral and guardian pretty heavily it's a big nerf to start so in a vacuum we don't like this killer instinct now changed to two points as well as nurturing instinct both of these are the three point nodes kind of gating the next tier down um they gave two four six percent magical uh, in the case of Nurturing Instinct, Killer Instinct Physical, they're now two points, three to six. So that's two more points that have opened up in the class talent tree. I'm a fan. I think this shit is long overdue. Lakara's Teachings, unfortunately, is not in here, but I'm okay with one three-point node. Three three-point nodes was a little much. New talent, Improved Swipe, increases Swipe and Brutal Slash damage by 50%. So it was baseline negated by 50, but then talents buffed that back up to basically where it was no to 50 percent better than what it was so that is a net buff on the surface for both bear and feral druid it's cool uh new talent put into the tree i don't know where this is going to go but we'll find out casting regrowth increases your movement speed and healing received by five percent for three six seconds so it's a two point talent node uh, i think resto druid obviously is very much going to support this Feral Druid might, and Guardian Druid, I don't, only will in cases where you take Dream of Scenarius, which I still don't know if we're going to do that. We'll have to find out. Another new talent, Gale Winds, Typhoon's Radius by 20% and range by 5 yards. This is an old uh, glyph that I remember from way back in Wrath of the Lich King. Now back into the, the game here. Fine. I think this is a good PvP buff. Uh, Incessant Tempest reduces the cooldown of Typhoon by five seconds. Cool. I think, again, a PvP buff, it's probably not really... Like, this one might be fine in Mythic Plus, but I think these two uh, buffs to Typhoon probably are more PvP-related than they are PvE-related. And, of course, the PvE side of the game is the one that I focus on. All right, so they added new connections between Rake and Rip. So let's look at this real quick. Uh, let's see. Talent calculator is... Right here. And we'll make this uh, my spec of focus. Because they haven't updated this yet, of course. So, this is now a connection. This is now baseline. And... Okay. Okay. So you can actually skip Thrash if you want to. Um, I think in single target, there might be validity to it because you now have uh, Rake, Shred, and Brutal Swipe. Uh, and now Swipe or Swipe Baseline if you don't talent Brutal Slash. So there's a chance that this could go, but I think it's going to kind of depend on tuning. New connection between Mame and Tireless Pursuit. So they added a connection here. I don't know why. These, like... You're always taking feline swiftness. I think if anything, they should have added the connection here if you wanted to, but sure, more connections. I'm never gonna say no to more connections. 
new connection between Skullbash to Primal Fury and Matted Fur. So, Matted Fur, Primal Fury. So they added a connection this way and a connection this way. Um, so if you're like cat weaving, you can skip the movement speed if you want. But again, I think it's pretty important. But you can now, instead of having to take these two points, you can skip those two points and just come down, grab all of this. This is now two points. So like if you're doing this, so you grab one, two. I'm assuming this is getting pulled out. We'll see what replaces it. I'm gonna assume it's still one point though. So three, four, five, six, seven. So if you're cat weaving, you're now only spending seven points to maximize your cat weaving output. I think that's a big buff to cat weaving for uh, resto druids. So would take that. New connection between Verdant Heart and Iron Fur. So Verdant Heart right here, Iron Fur right here. Again, okay with this. Anything that adds more connections, like I'm good with that. Improved Rejuve is gonna be moved up the tree. So Improved Rejuve is here. Where does it get moved to? I imagine it's probably gonna come right in somewhere in this area uh, or yeah, we'll see, we'll figure it out. Uh, Sunfire moved up and Star Surge moved to the side. So I'm what I'm going to guess is that S Sunfire is gonna come here. And Star Surge is gonna come here, out hanging out where, where Typhoon and Hibernate is. And I think the Typhoon talents are probably gonna come down here below this and just branch off into their own thing. Uh, where does Improved Sunfire go? Unknown. And Feral Druids then I'll start with Rip instead of Thrash. So you'll actually grab this as your starting point instead of this. Now, are they moving this up the tree or not? It's not really clear, but if that's the case and you're not getting Thrash, like you're still gonna have to go get Thrash. And because they don't connect Rip to Killer Instinct, like we'll have to see. Uh, so overall on the Class Druid, Class Tree side of things, for the most part, I think it's pretty good. Um, improved swipe is probably going to come right here where swipe is at now and forest walk I'm going to guess is going to be somewhere in this resto area of the tree um, so overall I think this is a net improvement more connections are good cutting up and freeing up two more points for example means that I can now get like renewal and minute roar if I wanted to uh, could grab something like tireless pursuit or I could grab maim as a feral druid uh, from the bear side of things, I'm kind of thinking about it. Minute Roar and Renewal will be good. Um, maybe grab a couple points in Nurturing Instinct to help with Moonfire damage. Overall, I think the, the class changes are good. Um, do they go far enough for every spec? I don't think so. I think Balance is pretty much unaffected by this. But for Feral and Guardian and Resto Druids, I think there's some positive changes here. All right, balanced druid. So completely redesigned the tree. Right now, PTR is not up, so I can't see this tree. And I don't think, let's find out real quick. I don't know if Wowhead has. Uh. Wait. Oh, that's beta. No, come on. Live. Sorry, click the wrong button. Uh, this is the 10.0 PTR version, so I don't think they're going to have the trees up yet. When we see the trees, we'll definitely be, I'll definitely be making follow-up videos, but right now we don't have them, so we're going to see. However, I think some really nice buffs for Moonkin in here, starting with Lunar Eclipse, no longer increasing the crit strike chance of Starfire, and instead increases the splash damage that Starfire does by 50%. I think this is a really nice buff to Moonkin AoE. They had really struggled in AoE situations, so a fight like Primal Council, they were quite bad on. Uh, and they are quite bad on because the current thing is like, oh, you get a little bit of flash damage and more crit, like whatever. It still doesn't mean that your overall damage is good. But instead now they're making this more focused on the spread splash damage, the sort of stat cleave side of it. And it also in turn makes crit strike potentially a little bit more valuable as a stat to Moonkin, who basically ignored it for the longest time. And then Umbral Intensity, let's switch to the balance tree here. Umbral Intensity, this talent right here, instead of increasing the crit strike chance by an additional 10%, increases the splash damage by an additional 10 and 20%. Um, Circle of Life and Death has been completely removed from the tree, so that's right here. Um, and is probably going to be replaced with this talent here, Cosmic Rapidity, 
where your three dots deal additional 25% damage faster. So basically it took the damage component of this and just replaced it and removed the regrowth healing effect. So probably again, a little bit of a sustain nerf potentially in PVP. Um, PVE probably doesn't matter, but it does impact Druid off healing, balance Druid off healing and any keys that you might be doing. So um, I think a good power shift. All right, Guardian, of course, you know, this one very much peaked. I got pinged like five times on Discord about this. Guardian tree has been redesigned. Great, I've been calling for this for a long time. Go watch any Guardian video, you'll see it. Ursine Adept is now baseline. This is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So Ursine Adept right here basically allows you to cast some spells that would normally pull you out of bear form in bear form and also allows multiple uses of Iron Fur to overlap, which originally you wouldn't be able to do that without this talent. Um, and then, of course, the damage taken thing is being removed anyways, so that doesn't matter anymore. But this is now baseline if you choose to be a Guardian Druid. Wonderful. That is a talent point saved, which is very valuable. Uh, and the other fantastic thing, Innervate can now be cast in bear form. Oh, for all the shit that we have to give Blizzard, I have to give them credit here. I've been asking for this for weeks. It's probably a little bit too late, but the fact that it's being done in 10.0.5, well, better late than never. This is a huge, huge boost. This now makes Innervate a potential, a really good option in Mythic Plus now, because you can now not sacrifice your defenses in order to help out your healer. If you're running with, say, like a Mistweaver or a Disc Priest that might be sucking some mana in Mythic Plus, especially as we're getting into higher keys, and we're running into situations where Thundering really doesn't give mana regen as far as I know. So Innervate now is going to be much more viable as a talent in Mythic Plus. Love this. Fantastic. Front of the pack. So this right here has been moved up to row three, probably replaces our sign adept in the tree. Uh, so fine. I, I think that's fine. I don't know if we're going to be taking it or not. Um, my concern is that we're going to have to take it in order to get Berserk, which is a concern. But again, don't know until we see the final trees. Flashing Claws has switched places with Reinvigoration. This scares me. So Flashing Claws right here. Gives your thrash a chance to additional trigger times. Reinvigoration's right here. Your frenzied regen cooldown is reduced by 15%. Uh, 30% overall. So this basically... Earth Warden, for some reason, is connected to this. So now this takes this talent and makes this side of the tree very thrash heavy focused. So I think there's some now interesting possibilities with the tree. We're going to find out once we can see more of the trees. I need to look through them before I make any judgments. I'm a little scared for it, but I think overall it might be an okay change. A new talent coming in, Thorns of Iron. So that is a name. Okay. When you cast Iron Fur, you also deal physical damage equal to 30% of your army armor split among enemies within 12 yards. On the surface, this sounds like a really good Mythic Plus talent because you can also combine it with Brambles as well as Rage of the Sleeper. Uh, and all of a sudden, something like Layered Main might become really valuable. Ursox Endurance might become really valuable if you're just leaning into this kind of passive reflect damage type situation. Uh, we're going to have to see where it applies in the tree and how hard it is to be able to take and what it does to build diversity. But anytime there's new talents, new connections, and it sounds like they're kind of expanding the tree to add more talent choice options, I think I'm okay with this. Again, we'll have to see the new trees when, they, when we finally get them up. New talent, Ray, strike with the might of Ursoc, dealing physical damage to all enemies in front of you and deals reduced damage beyond five targets. I really like this. This is a new ability as far as I'm aware of. Uh, but anytime you can add a button to a spec that has minimal amount of buttons already, uh, I'm a fan of this personally. I think this is a, a good thing. Um, we'll see what the tuning on it is to see if it's a single target or more AOE type situation, small cleave. Um, but, you know, Anytime there's new talents in, I'm excited. I, I like this idea of adding new stuff to the tree. New talent, Moonless Knights. When you cast a single target ability on an enemy afflicted by Moonfire, you cause them to burn an additional 10% of arcane damage. My guess is it's going to come down on this side of the tree. Maybe replaces Blood Frenzy in the tree. Blood Frenzy hopefully moves. We'll see. Um, and this side of the tree really just focuses in on heavy, heavy, heavy arcane focused damage. I think this is going to be a very aggressive, 
damage oriented build and on this side you can maybe go more of a thrash uh defensive oriented build with some stuff in the middle like there's some real possibilities now with some diversity that might actually be good we'll see new talent lunar beam uh, this is an ability that's been in the tree for a while it's never been any good we'll see what happens again depending on where it's placed it may or may not be valuable summons a beam of lunar light dealing arcane damage and healing you over eight and a half seconds and it says pathing restructured i don't know if this means that the pathing to the talents has been restructured or if the pathing in the way that uh it's summoned is restructured the big problem with lunar beam always was the fact that it doesn't move with you so you it kind of plants you stationary i can see this being a pretty solid raid choice because you generally aren't moving a lot in raid although the first see i've done six fights i think five fights in raid vault of the incarnates and in almost all of them there's a, it's a heavy movement type situation or at least light movement uh with uh, bosses like uh kurog being a heavy movement fight at least there's periods of heavy movement so it could work there but like senarth you're probably never taking this talent because you're just not going to get value out of it so i'll be curious to see what they what this is where this is located is it forced to be taken is it a optional thing for heavy movement fights like what sort of stuff that we have here all right, Earth Warden, Tooth and Claw, Reinforced Fur, After the Wildlife, Guardian of the Loon, have all have connections into the Final Gate section. So what they did is they're keeping this where they're at, and it goes, bloop, it's probably straight down. Probably straight down. Probably straight down. Probably straight down. I like this on the whole, but it definitely means that there needs to be some talent swaps because, like, you're not taking a Loon's Favored without taking Fury of Nature. I just don't see you ever doing that. You know, same with like taking t Tooth and Claw and Circle of Life and Death. Like, you're just not going to do that. So like, while these connections are fine, these two in particular, I think are really, really rough. Um, we'll see. Pulverize, Blood Frenzy, and Twin Moonfire have found slightly different homes. So Pulverize right here. We'll see where it moves. We know it's not going to be here because that's now the home of Flashing Claws. Uh, Blood Frenzy hopefully gets moved up the tree. I think this is so key to uh, to Guardian Rage generation, although kind of less so now, I think. But I think it's really important. And then Twin Moonfire right here uh, getting moved. So I think it probably just, I don't know where it goes, but those talents being moved. Blood Frenzy is the most interesting one. Uh, I think it kind of depends. And then they did some icon changes for Vicious Cycle right here. Fury of Nature right here and scintillating moonlight right here just to make them a little bit different from other stuff on the tree sure fine not not upset about that so my thoughts on the guardian one is i definitely want to see where everything on the tree is being moved i think there is potential now that they've really sort of refocused the tree into like a heavy thrash mall physical damage side and a heavy physical or heavy arcane damage sort of uh bear side it kind of depends on and and like both sides have their defensive talents so obviously scintillating moonlight still big 10 percent dr twin moonfire you know giving you more damage galactic guardian giving you damage and rage rage of the sleeper hasn't moved so this is still going to be really good i think there is a chance that we don't have to come out and grab like incarn anymore like if they do the stuff with berserk they didn't really show or anything like that um because berserk isn't changing like i'm still very concerned about how we're gonna make all of this work because like circle of life and death eludes favorite and fury of nature haven't changed positions like what i think probably should happen is fury of nature eludes favored uh these two in particular should probably switch places with like blood frenzy uh, blood frenzy can come like right here or you know right here and then you take like a two-point talent and kind of move it somewhere else to and put fury of nature and kind of make this like a full sort of arcane you know maybe move a berserk talent here so you can berserk talent here and stop if you wanted but then you grab uh yeah you can grab uh, fury of nature you get scintillating moonlight galactic guardian twin moonfire 
and then you can grab like uh the moon's favorite right here i think that's probably the swap that way if you go down this side of the tree you're full in on moonfire and then on this side of the tree you can still grab you know your your frenzied regen iron for cost reduction uh, but then on this side of the tree you come down you're grabbing flashing claws you get ursox fury you can get rendon tear you can get dream of scenarius which has some in it with which has some uh synergies with the new uh resto talent that's coming in with the regrowth talent so like you're kind of leaning into this side where your sustain isn't coming from all your ticking arcane damage but in this burst with dream of scenarius and then again depending on where they put after the wildfire or after the wildfire isn't moving either so like you still have this option of grabbing this burst healing through after the wildfire dream of scenarius on top of just your, your standard frenzied regen and then you're focusing more on absorbs rather than sustain because you're going to have a lot of thrash and maul going um, so i really like that they're kind of taking the tree and splitting its focus a little bit you have just the moonfire one which honestly is going to be a lot more passive damage with a big cooldown and rage of the sleeper that is really going to be very valuable to kind of helping with sort of this passive reflect damage and then you have your thrash maul side of the tree which focuses a lot more on physical damage and a little bit more into the absorb and burst healing side of things rather than this more sustained ticking damage and then of course you still have your you know incarn incarn reduction talent here in the middle and then of course what happens with like the new bear talent with uh thorn of iron thorns of iron rather where does rays fall into the tree where does moonless night fall into the tree where does lunar beam fall into the tree they've got some places for them probably here in the middle or right here and they just straight up open up these some of these connections or you do something like right here and right here and you open up these connections here it's like there's all sorts of possibilities with the tree we'll keep an eye on wowhead see if they can upload the new trees onto the ptr site and of course we'll keep an eye on the ptr site as well all right let's switch over to feral now uh so feral is getting some interesting changes i think some of this is going to be a net nerf overall um uh, feral is doing really well but i find it weird because they're not the best when you look at most of the logs it's probably because they're really over probably overperforming in mythic plus um potentially but like if they don't have certain stuff going on like their damage is kind of overall mediocre it's really weird so circle of life and death is getting a five percent nerf from 25 percent to 20 percent not we don't like this but sure whatever taste for blood ferocious bite damage increased to four to eight percent per bleed on the target up from two to four it's right here the problem with taste for blood is that i don't think there's like it's a point economy problem you know because like right now for example you go one or not this you go like you know you grab these let's just say you grab double clawed rake let's look at a mythic plus build you grab saber tooth you grab pouncing strikes and then you come here you get rampant ferocity berserk tear open wounds dreadful bleeding you grab both of these grab survival instincts like like in order to get everything that you want in this tree from the purposes of like you only have one point to spend so you could spend it here you can also throw it here to get reduction on convoke and get the old legendary effect uh, you can throw the point into better energy and energy regen versus 4% damage on Ferocious Bite for bleeds on the target. Like, it's a point economy problem. That That is the thing. And in, even in single target builds, like if you go more of a, a pure single target build, for example. Uh, you go points here. Like if you put points here, uh, you don't we don't grab this in single target ah get out of here stupid thing so you go here you grab both of these you grab these you're grabbing berserk grabbing brutal slash grab this berserk raging fury survival instincts blood talons go a point here grab convoke you're grabbing these you're grabbing adapt to swarm like you're now missing out on carnivorous instincts you're missing out on feral frenzy you're missing out on vein ripper 
and apex predator potentially like the point economy I, I, is just bad frankly uh, you know and as long as i mean i know it's like it's a pattern here two one 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 two but like the point economy just isn't there for this talent to be worth it and i think that's the biggest problem with it it's never i mean in single target even four percent damage was always going to be better than tear open wounds but tear open wounds is one point less which means you get something more powerful down the tree like a feral frenzy which does more damage than four percent that's always been the problem with it. uh rampant ferocity got a buff 10 percent more damage splashed onto extra targets with the rip so this is this talent here uh all nearby enemies uh, affected by your rip for 35 percent of damage dealt reduced beyond five targets so um even though the circle of life and death stuff has been damaged, there's a little bit of an offset with making ferocious bite and AOE a little bit more valuable. Um, I run a setup now where I can, depending on my combo point generation and with my crit values, generating extra CPs, I can basically, with my primal wrath of group, um, by the time I get to five combo points again, I need to primal wrath for terror open wounds again. The only reason Rampant Ferocity is in my AoE build and doing a lot for me is because I have Apex, where I get those free rips and they proc a lot in heavy AoE situations. Think like Overgrown Ancient and Algathars. Uh, when you get those ad phases, like you Primal Wrath, all of that stuff, because Primal Wrath is uncapped. Like, I have a Tada sound that goes off when Apex procs. It goes off a lot. I hear it more often than you think you would. Uh, dreadful bleeding bonus damage was dropped by 5%. So this is this talent here. So it makes rip damage a little bit down. Again, they're kind of nerfing bleeds across the board. Infected wounds bonus to rake damage was dropped by 5%. So of course, this is right here in the middle of the tree. Vein Ripper increases bleed durations to 33% versus 25%. I really like this boost. I think Vein Ripper now becomes a very viable option, uh, particularly in single target, I think, because you can now... Uh, take advantage of longer bleed durations and get more ferocious bites in there, especially if you go and you can find the point economy somehow for taste for blood. I think there's some options there for it. Um, ultimately, I think Bane Ripper relies on taste for blood being in your build because you want that damage to ferocious bite in order to offset the damage you lose from uh, from rend and tear or from rip, and, rip and tear. So I don't know if this is going to be there, but you know we'll take a buff to a talent that hasn't really seen a lot of play. So I like it. Lunar Inspiration damage increased by 66%. When you read this initially, you're like, holy shit, this talent is going to be mandatory. Yeah, probably. Tear Open Wounds has been moved up to row... Uh, it's been moved to row four. So it's been moved up above the gate, which means it's probably coming over here. Uh, somewhere. Because, like, this is the only place they can put it, really. Or it's coming over here for some stupid reason. Uh, survival Instincts moved up to row 5. So Survival Instincts is moving up probably into this Tear Open Wounds place. Um, or, you know, as we can see with some stuff. Infected Wounds is being moved up to row 5. So it's coming up again. And then Berserk has been moved down to row 6. So Berserk is coming down a row, probably swapping places with Infected Wounds or with Survival Instincts. One of the two Survival Instincts come up here. Um... It's, what I'm guessing is that Berserk comes down right here, kind of sitting in this spot where Moment of Clarity and Infected Wounds is at. Survival Instincts comes up to replace Berserk, and then Infected Wounds is moving over to where Tear Open Wounds is now, and Tear Open Wounds is moving up here. Moment of Clarity being moved down to row 7, so it's coming down here. So yeah, this kind of cons confirms my suspicions. So Tear Open Wounds probably comes here, into this spot. Berserk moves down to be in the middle of this row. Survival Instincts moves to where Berserk is now, and Moment of Clarity moves to where Survival Instincts is now. That's my guess. Berserk Heart of the Lion and Berserk Frenzy moved within moved within row seven, and connections changed. So they're taking these two talents and moving them in right here, probably so that they can connect with Berserk here. Also wonder if it means that they're going to connect Predatory Swiftness and Dreadful Bleeding a little bit. Um, that from an aesthetic perspective probably makes sense um, and it allows you to basically go okay grabbing berserk and then i can immediately choose which two berserk talents i get i actually like this change a lot because um, it's going to connect berserk is going to connect with uh moment of clarity heart of the lion and frenzy i think that's my guess 
and so go there could also be a situation where uh part of the lion and frenzy also connect now to of course they'll still connect to carnivorous instinct cat's cat's curiosity as well as frantic momentum so some really interesting changes there potentially on the connections we'll take that position of wild slashes and brutal strikes swapped in their choice node so right now uh, when you open this up in game uh, brutal slash is on one side they just flip their positions literally doesn't impact anything you're probably still taking brutal slash in most all cases and the biggest change i think the one that's most interesting at least lunar inspiration is now a choice node with feral frenzy so they buffed this by 66 percent, but they're moving it down here um i'm a little confused by this because lunar inspiration you're using moonfire basically once every what, 15 seconds whereas feral frenzy you're getting five combo points on a 45 second cooldown um, the only thing i can think of is that they're like both of these are abilities that generate combo points and have ticking damage over time you're choosing a more burst higher combo point generation but on a longer cooldown versus a more sustained moonfire based build um that does a lot more and that's probably why they had to buff lunar inspiration was to justify its position with feral frenzy um, I think in some cases this actually might work. I think it kind of makes Feral Frenzy and in the AoE build at least, it eliminates this talent point as a choice node so you free it up for somewhere else. So for example, uh, kind of the standard AoE build that we run right now is this. Uh, grab that, grab that, and grab this. And then we grab Rip and Tear so that we can get here. Two points here, so you get here. Uh, we don't grab Adaptive Swarm. You grab Convoke. You grab Blood Talents, Feral Frenzy, and a point here to finish off your tree. So what this does is it takes this point and probably either just shifts it up into Carnivorous Instinct, potentially over into Cat's Curiosity, or even potentially into something like Taste for Blood, or into Tireless Energy. So for the AoE build, it really doesn't affect much. I think that or you still take feral frenzy like there's still that possibility that you just take feral frenzy again and you get that extra ferocious bite or that extra primal wrath in a window that you maybe not have could have um overall i think the talent position changes are not that big of a deal like i said we've kind of talked about this a little bit we'll see what it does for pathing purposes i just realized i don't have anything going on on my headphones and i'm playing with them um but the biggest thing is going to be the numbers nerf. So they're nerfing the bleeds a little bit and tried to power up Ferocious Bite a little bit more. I don't think they like the way that the damage thing goes. I think this is a little short-sighted. I really love the way Feral plays right now. I love the Spinning Plates build um, and the way that it works. I My guess is that it has to be because it's kind of overperforming in Mythic Plus right now. Like I did a crazy amount of damage on a specific fight in one dungeon that I'm not going to mention on here. But let's just say I did six digit DPS. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but overall, I think the feral changes are interesting. I think they're a little short sighted with the damage bonus. But I, I just have to think that it's a mythic plus thing that unfortunately is going to impact single target in a way that is going to drive feral down the meters. I was finishing top five in most fights except Karag. Um, when we were progressing through our raid the you know last night and we're going to be doing again in about an hour and a half as i record this but um i think the feral changes are probably a little short-sighted in terms of the numbers tuning but the changes that they're making to the tree i i kind of like actually um uh, taste for blood is kind of like the biggest thing that i'm just like meh about because again it's a point economy thing that makes it so that that talent isn't being taken it's not because it's underpowered it's simply because there's not a good way to take that talent skip tear open wounds and get everything you want at the bottom of the tree that's the problem um so overall resto druids since you don't have any specific talent tree changes what does this do for you obviously blizzard clearly saying that they think your 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 spec tree is fine i tend to agree i i like the way this tree is laid out um Obviously, some numbers tuning stuff could be happening inside the tree to maybe shift the power of talents. But overall, I like the layout of the tree and the options that you have. What I think this does for you, though, is when you look at something like this, you're getting two points here. We'll just kind of leave it at that for now. That you can come do something like this where you get thrash, the improved swipe, 
let's put the three points here, but we're going to pretend for a sec it's not. Um, you can choose the Feline Swiftness if you want, but then you're going to be able to come down and get Primal Fury for free, which is cool. Um, obviously, with Improved Rejuve being moved up, you're going to be able to get that earlier on. Like, I think this is a good way, like, to make Cat Weaving in particular a really viable playstyle. You do sacrifice your, your overall mob control with Hibernate and Typhoon. But having done most of the dungeons, I think that Typhoon and Hibernate are less valuable in this season than they were, say, in Season 3 slash 4, where Typhoon and Hibernate were very valuable because of A, Shrouded, and B, just the way some of the other dungeons were designed. With the eight dungeons that we have in the Season 1 pool, at least to my knowledge, I haven't played Resto at all in Mythic Plus yet. It's, it's going to happen. But I don't think that you're missing much if you decide to cat weave versus owl weave because typhoon and hibernate just don't don't seem like they have a really a big of a place in terms of overall like thing and with the change to sunfire being much more accessible and star surge being moved over like i think owl weaving for resto druids could be dead and cat weaving is now going to be the play style because of the new connections that you're getting so um I think Resto Druids are probably pretty happy overall with the class tree changes. We'll see again how these new new talents, where, where does Forest Walk go? I think that's the biggest question mark. Does it come right here in between Wild Charge, Inverted Heart? I don't know. Um, it's kind of a question of where does it go? Does it replace where Improved Rejuvenation goes? I think that's probably the best case scenario in terms of a guess. Um, so there is a possibility that it could be there. So overall druids it's going to be a really interesting time on ptr and we see what we get so um overall i i like the ideas that they've got going here we'll have to i think again the feral feral number tweaking was short-sighted the guardian druid tree i really want to see these trees because i think that's going to determine what kind of play styles we might be looking at and we might actually have more than one play style now as a bear which is exciting so um long video thank you very much for staying with me through it all uh, we'll be doing follow-up videos for all the specs as we go through, and this is obviously going to shift the guides that I'll be doing for both uh, Balance and Restoration Druid, because now I'm going to be thinking about it with 10.0.5 changes in, in place when I do those guides. So we'll get on the load of those, and I'll be doing follow-up videos for, of course, Guardian and Feral once 10.0.5 drops, and we start looking at these talent changes. So until the next video, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're enjoying yourself, you're having fun. Keep on gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video.